Hola, Darren. <laughs> Hola, Darren. <laughs> um, where have you been lately? <laughs> ah, it's about been been to uh, been to work in Manchester. Um, mooch around Clitheroe. Oh, that, I've been to Barcelona. <laughs> How funny! I have also <laughs> been spending some time in Spain, and uh, and I've also been spending a short time in Barcelona, and also spending a bit of time in the same flat as you in Barcelona, though not that's at the same right. time. Yeah. In fact, I right. think we I think we worked out we only spent about three hours in Barcelona in Spain at the same time in different cities. Yeah. But yeah. we have both been to Spain recently. And my, um, I my first gone. My first time in Barcelona, how many times do you think I sang Barcelona by Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Cavalier? <laughs> I, I think it was uh, at uh, least. I, I think um, thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, that would be about twice a day. I reckon it's more like twenty. Okay, about four times a day. I reckon. Did you at any time on your way to the airport, or before, or even packing? Did you at any point sing? This year we're off to sunny Spain. <laughs> I didn't. And bizarrely, I sang it last night whilst watching Spain play football. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, what, what do you like, Barcelona? I liked it. I liked it. It's um, It's big, isn't it? It is, it's yeah. Big place. But or um, or 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 it can be small, I suppose. I don't know. You know, the Bourne, where where I usually stay, yeah. and also where you stay. I mean, I yeah. think you can treat that as a very. Um, I think you can treat that as a very small city, and 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 just yeah. have a perfectly good holiday staying in the, the old Barcelona, yeah. and you can get and to you the know, beach. I, I think if I was there and maybe we had friends who were there at the same time, we could have easily easily spent a lot of time just going round bars in that area and not really seeing any anything else of the city. Definitely. Yeah, I mean at the moment I guess uh you know, because my favourite person in the world um lives here part of the time. Um, I'm, I, I guess I, I'm, I go to Barcelona, uh, three or four times a year, but yeah. yeah, I can sometimes go there and buy my 10 ticket, you know, uh, yeah. carne travel card thing and not use it at all. Like I, it's yeah. small enough that I can do it all on foot sometimes, but yeah. then, yeah, no, it is also big that it really stretches out um um the, the suburbs and there's great things there as well and there's great did you go to like um at Pobla New or anything like that yes like the, we yeah. walked um we walked around there a little bit on the way mm. to the beach yeah um, from yeah. there's a design museum um which i haven't done and, yeah that's i've left you tickets by the way in your sketchbook for that they're, they're valid okay. for six months okay great. Uh, and that's kind of north of Pablo New, so you can we went there first and then walked down through Pablo New to the beach. And I bought a Aperol Spritz for 12 euros. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Well, let's start. So, so, so the idea of this video is to show, show each other our painting from our trip. So yes. my trip, wow. I mean, my, my trip was ridiculous as, as you'll start to see. I mean, yes. I was cars and boats and trains and planes um, but I initially flew to Seville. I Sevilla. recognize that. I and mean. This is, this is a placa España in um, Seville. But down here, Seville and Cadiz. Uh, see, I see, I see, and then here's a thing I struggle with, right? Mm. Because of hanging around with my favorite person in the world. I've yep. been picked up on my pronunciation, so I'm starting right. to say things like Kadi. 
but it's C A D I Z, and I feel a bit of a prick. It is, yeah. And and I want to say Cadiz because I'm in England, England, talking to an English person, and I don't want to sound like a prick. Cadiz, so I don't, yeah, I don't I get, know what to do I understand. Now. I always remember uh, Robert Elms, who I do like very much, on uh, uh, who also lived in Barcelona and talking in his London accent on on BBC London. But every time he mentioned Barcelona, he <laughs> lent into the pronunciation of Barcelona, which such gusto that, you know, the fle- you could hear the phlegm coming out of the, the radio speaker. You go, yeah, yeah, me and my wife, we went the other day to Barcelona. You're like, why are you talking like that? I mean, why? There's no need. <laughs> We call it something different in London, and we're in London. <laughs> anyway, I shall undoubtedly alternate throughout that. So, so this is Seville, and this is Pac for España. And um, well, the reason I was picking up, because you were talking about Aperol Spritz, but down in the south of Spain, yeah, oh, it's just so cheap. It's so cheap. <laughs> you know, yeah. I like buying, like... One and a half euro glasses of wine that is, uh, yeah. is better than, yeah. and you're just buying the house wine, and it is fine. And yeah. it is so, I mean, cheapness isn't everything, but it's so relaxing sometimes to not even think about it and just order course, things. And, course, and, yeah. and, and especially, well, I mean, I used that approach to being in Barcelona, even though it wasn't necessarily cheap. And I just Bar- thought, yeah, I mean, Barcelona is cheap spend the money. Yeah, Barcelona is cheap, but uh, Spaniards don't think so. You know, Spaniards think that Barcelona and, and Madrid are expensive. But I mean, Barcelona mm. is still cheap compared to here. I mean, not compared mm. to where you are. You can, you know, I could buy your whole street, couldn't I? With with just by selling off my bedroom or something. But just ju- yeah, basically, just um, sell a couple more records. And you'd be, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, painting that. I, I'm really pleased with a lot of what I did out there. I really got into painting, I really got into uh, not using line. Um, nearly all of these paintings were done in situ, and a lot of my trip was on my own. And yeah, I think I think I've done some of my best paintings this year uh, on my trip. Uh, mm. It's something about this size and the approximation, and not using the line. If I was using line, I would be trying to get a certain level of detail. Yeah, and there's something about the choices your brain makes with a scene yeah. like this, and just really lovely things happen with chance. You know, you looked at this, this part of the building or this, and I thought, how am I going to do it? Yeah. And yet three quarters an hour later, you've done something and it does look a bit like what you were looking at. Yeah. Tell me about uh, what I'm, I'm looking at on your screen. Well, this is my, I decided to make a sketchbook to take with me. Ah, right. Um, okay. I've got this uh, really old watercolor paper like decades old it was given to me by a friend and um it's thirsty really thirsty <laughs> and uh what have you you know you put paint onto it you see some little test colors here yeah. it just soaks it up straight away so it's it's not like you can't move it around at all the paper, right, the paper. Yeah. once it's on it's on and it looks more I, like the finish on it more like a marker yeah um, i do know what that it's kind great of paper. for yeah, it's great for ink pen. It right. works really well. It gets really blotchy because the, the paper draws the ink out of the, the nib. Uh, and mm. so the first one I did here was um, of the view from the rooftop of the flat. Yes. Just, um, yeah. Actually, it wasn't from the rooftop. This was just from out from of the, the window. Out the from the front window, yeah. Yeah, it's looking down the street, and I just wanted to draw all the – the um, TV aerials. Yeah. It's very European, that view. It's the same in like Italy. You'll get that sort of view, same colours. It'd be very Mediterranean. Yeah. Wires everywhere, aerials everywhere. Yeah, I also have drawn that view, not 
here, but elsewhere I've drawn that view. Yeah. And that's a funny thing, isn't it? It was quite fun for us to both literally have occupied the same space at different times. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. And sat sat in the did you sit in that that uh chair, that wooden chair by the yeah. balcony and just draw yeah. it? Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um okay. Um so then from um from Seville, uh I stayed a few days in uh Puerto de Santa Maria. And I did, I've done this a couple of times, um, for a couple of different reasons since I've been there. So the painting here on the right was done at night uh in yeah. another placa España, um the same yeah. name but a different city. Um and then this one was done when I got back. Right. I'm not really quite sure what I was after doing. I think I was, I think I might have been, I don't know. We, I, simple question, I suppose. Do you prefer one to the other? Um, the one, maybe the one you did when you got back has got a little bit more balance to it. Mm. You know, you, your eyes are drawn drawn into it because of the street. I think there's a slightly more successful composition, isn't there? Although I yeah. think that the, I think the composition in both of them is slightly faulty. Uh, right. I, I think that the reason I drew it is because I was sitting in a bar with my favorite person in the world, and I just wanted to draw something. I didn't. Do you yes. know what I mean? I didn't choose yeah, the yeah. view. The view chose me because of where I was sitting, which is okay. Yeah, sometimes. Do, do you ever feel sometimes you, you, you're just sitting there with your sketchbook and you feel like, well, I have to draw something. I'm, I've brought it with me. I do think that, but I think it's okay. And I think sometimes yeah. that does make, does sometimes make really good paintings, but sometimes doesn't. You know? Yeah. Um, this is actually Very almost, good. this is almost the same view and a similar thing in that um, here we have the painting done in situ, which is, you know, quite wild, actually. It is. Um, Big fun. That sky, the colours are quite Van Gogh. Yeah. And then here is the the sort of more having another stab at it from a photograph yeah. taken at the time when I got home. I just find that sort of, it, it, it did actually sort of provoke a little conversation on Twitter the other day, didn't it, about, um, I mean, this is much, much more interesting, I think, the background here, but then, I mean, what is quite interesting about it is is that these stalks that the lanterns are on were shaped like that. But of course, right, yeah, yeah. I'm incapable of doing straight lines anyway, so it looks like <laughs> I'm like, been trying to paint a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I don't know. I, I I've definitely over the uh, the past few years been very pro taking a photograph of something and working on it later, especially in winter. Yeah. But still working on it as close as possible. Yep. To um as close as possible to the time I took the photo. So there's some feeling of being there that's carried through to the picture, I yeah. guess. Yeah. I think as I said in that chat we had on Twitter that a photo can definitely help improve your composition. But being there uh lends a certain looseness to it. I think there's some paintings in here. Uh, a few people asked to buy some of these, and I'm, I'm really, these mean a lot to me, these pictures, and I, I yeah. might hang on to them a bit. Um, I'll, I'll explain a bit more later on as we go, like some of the in situ stuff. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, I refuse to use the expression au plein air. <laughs> I don't see why artists get a special word for doing something outside. Yeah. Like yeah, running yeah. isn't called a different word because you do it outside, you know, digging yep. isn't done, yep. you know, like, like nothing else has a different word for you doing no. outside, but artists, no. it's painting. Oh, I'm painting. Oh, I'm painting au plein air. Yep. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Did you paint au plein air in Barcelona? <laughs> I'm willing to accept uh, I'm painting on location. Because you may be indoors uh, in yeah, a cafe. I think I'm, I think I might switch yeah. to on location because I'm also thinking yeah. situ makes me sound like a bit of a prick. I'm thinking of <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'll tell you my next one. Yep. This was done in a pub. Good. It was well outdoor, done. actually. Um, it was outdoor at the pub, and it was you'd recommended me um, some pubs, and this was one you hadn't recommended. Um, yeah, well, that's great as well because now I, already I have some places to. Uh, get, you can send me to some places when I go back yeah. to um, Barcelona. So this place is called um, Black Lab, funnily enough, and there was yeah. a, and it's named after a Black Labrador, um, but not this Black Labrador. We were outside drinking. Um, oh no, I found the receipt a minute ago. <laughs> and, uh, Receipts are good like that, aren't they? Here we are. So, this was our first night. I had a half a terraplane, and Becky had half a manor farm. Terraplane was a dark beer, I think. Oh, and a Claudia and a Lalola. We had a few drinks and some potatoes. Receipts. This is a sorry, this conversation might take a sudden turn now where you didn't expect to go, but receipts can be incredibly powerful mm. about about a about a year after my dad died uh i found a receipt i was going for a bag and pulled out a receipt of the last time i saw him and the dinner i'd brought wow, him wow. and and it, you know like there's so much detailed information in a receipt isn't there if it's for dinner you know, yeah. you literally see what you order. Well, you don't because they sometimes get it wrong. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, no, no more than that. But I just, I, I, I had a real dilemma as to what to do with this receipt when I found it. And I'm not entirely sure what I decided to do. I feel like I might have poked it somewhere. So it's kind of half lost, if you know what I mean. Well, speaking of receipts. Oh, do I owe you some money? <laughs> This is from a holiday in Wales. Oh, that's cool. That's and I really drew lovely. them. Yeah, the car park tickets and the tried to get it really accurate. So yeah, that's yeah, really yeah, interesting because that 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 has that f- dilemma we've talked about before is when you have to render text when you're drawing yeah. a building, and yeah. part of what makes the building beautiful is the t- type typeface on the sign. Yeah. Um, and you, when you do your album covers, often ignore the typeface, just do it in your own always, typeface. Always it, ignore whereas it. Whereas there, yeah. I guess you're doing something slightly different. Yeah, I've tried to, to get it exact, but yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, you're right. Receipts are, receipts are, are good, especially when they're from holidays and things This like is that. the ball ring in Puerto Santa Maria. Um, Santa Maria. Yeah. yeah. And down... Have you heard uh, the, the, um, of the musician uh, Mongo Santa Maria? No. Right. He's a famous jazz musician and um, plays um, I'm going to just say, guess, he's, a bong- he's a bongo player. I don't know <laughs> if they are bongos. Uh, but there's um, there's a line in a, there's a moment in the film Blazing Saddles where the, the big bad character Mongo turns up and one of the Mexican characters bumps into him and says, Mongo, Santa Maria. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I never got the joke. I didn't even know it was a joke until years later when I finally heard of Mongo Santa Maria. Ah! <laughs> so whenever you say Santa Maria, I will always say it. Mongo well, I mean, Santa it won't Maria. be long before before I, I leave Santa Maria on my travels. So. <laughs> this is the ball ring. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, um, uh, down in the... Uh, South of Spain, they still do have um, mm. ball fighting. Um, so this is actually a working uh, ball ring. Uh, it's been um, it's outlawed in uh, Barcelona now. There's no, yeah. there's no ball fighting the, in Barcelona. The sad thing is, um, I mean, it's not sad that it's outlawed. I, I agree, it should be. Um, aren't they magnificent buildings? Oh well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, there's a dilemma in that. As, uh, you know, it's like uh, for some reason I'm moved to think of the um, the uh, Eric Gill designed facade on Broadcasting House. You know, right. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's it's the it's the statue argument. Is you know, should we pull everything down? And yeah. you know, there are beautiful buildings 
in this country, which were undoubtedly workhouses and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, I saw it and immediately wanted to do the, these, these red doors yes. Yes. and, yeah. uh, really enjoying doing shadows, uh, yeah, in yeah. The sun. I'm really comment. enjoying trying to paint light and trying to tell the viewer what time of day it is or what the weather was like. If I can achieve that, then I'm, I'm feeling pretty clever. Um, this is, uh, the castle in, I might've written it down. Castle of San Marcos. Um, once again, actually, I think this is a, a view slightly decided by the fact that this is the best, the seat free yeah. in the bar. You know, I yeah. think it's probably better angles of, of this, <laughs> this, this, this um, castle. Um, I reckon it's your turn. My turn, is it? Uh, what have we got? Ah, so, this, so before, um, before I went, I asked you to set me a, a little artistic challenge. And I'd yeah, if, uh, I could do it. Um, didn't go well as you. I only did it the once, but it's what's coming up. Well, and you said I, mean, I, I, I struggled to think of something as well. Actually, I, I didn't. I, can um, you remember what you asked me to do? I think I asked you to draw people, but by memory. So, yeah. so um, instead of like, because I, I, I don't know if we've discussed it in Brentwood Tuxedo, but I have a slight problem with a certain type of urban sketching which is when people draw people on trains and draw people in cafes. Mm. And I think, I think it's a bit creepy and I think it's a bit <laughs> wrong actually, because I think if you were taking photographs of people unawares, that would be wrong. So why isn't drawing people unawares wrong? There's something a little odd about it, I find. Um, so I was asking. Well, of course, draw. I mean, taking photographs of people, is also a thing in terms of like street photography. I have a problem with it. Yeah. yeah, uh, I, yeah. I have a, I have a problem with that invasion of privacy, but I have a problem with it with drawing. And so mm. I asked you to draw people, but draw them from memory. I mean, I suppose yeah. it could be argued that maybe the invasion of privacy is still there. But, well, I can't, um, you could argue that. Yeah. But I don't know. I wasn't, anyway, I didn't uh, stir at somebody for like 10 minutes to get the face into my head later on well, well I think so we went draw, to a pub all drawing is encouraging us to look and remember more i think isn't it you know so. yeah yeah um but i think with 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 this one this drawing is that i didn't um it was i wasn't paying much attention to the person i ended up drawing so it was only after the fact that i thought oh that guy i'll draw him so you know so i wasn't even aware that I was gathering information for a future. Right. Well, you, right. Well, I went to a pub called Ale and Hop, uh, which you recommended. Yeah. Uh, what's well, a good, a good craft beer bar. A lot of good craft beer bars in Barcelona, aren't there? Uh, there are, yeah. Um, really good. Uh, the, the other one I sent you to was, is, is it, I can't pronounce it, is it called something like Kaida Cola or something like I think that. that's about right, Kaida Cold, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is really good. Really good. That's that my favourite one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so Alan Hop, this this was the the guy who served us our drinks. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I don't know that guy personally. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I've been served by him though. I know who he is. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah. I mean, it's basically it, it looks like we bought our drinks from Albert Einstein. <laughs> Well, Albert Einstein, but he's decided to go for the the um, the Nick Cave Johnny Marr strategy of of, of growing <laughs> old and dyeing his hair jet black until he's yeah. seventy. <laughs> <laughs> Nick hasn't Nick Cave got a lot of hair for a bald man? Oh, hold <laughs> on! You think Nick, Cave, Nick, what, it, Nick Cave is bald, and it's what are you saying? I, it's weird? I no no I always he's he's kind of got a very um remember the comedian mick miller yes you've got that right so, so 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 he's got a receding oh i feel like i need to look at him now but you're saying <laughs> he's got a receding hairline but that their hair is still voluminous yes yeah right yeah. maurice gibb maurice gibb was the same yes 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 well it is it's almost simultaneously bald and hairy <laughs> 
I think Nick Cave has gone on record as saying he will never not dye his hair black. And I think that's um, fair enough. There, there's, there's such a sort of, I don't know, once a goth, always a goth mission statement about that, that you have to respect yeah. it, actually. <laughs> um, um, this is uh, maybe, maybe one of the weaker ones, um, because it's one of the few where I broke with the house style. And as you might be able to see, there is some small pen line uh, defining this. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lifeguard. Um, yeah. Whatever you call it. Turret house. <laughs> and it is. I, uh, no, this is in a place called San Luca, uh, which is right. um, a, sh- a little bit, a little bus ride out from Puerto santa maria in fact we got stranded there because we uh missed the bus home and we had to do (laughs) uh, a combination of buses and uh trains to get back uh, to our hotel Uh, this is actually a river because you can you know even though it looks like it's the coast obviously the the other side is closer than another country that isn't that isn't africa (laughs) it's um down that part of spain it's very there's a lot of little estuaries and salt flats and stuff that yeah yeah uh but i like it nonetheless Mm. And this this is the painting from my day trip day trip nice. to uh Cadiz. And yeah, I'm really pleased with this. Yeah. I'm really pleased. So what I did was is I sort of um I you know I was looking at that contrast of light. You know, like when you take a photograph of of something like this, and I think I did. Yeah. But you know when you take a photograph like this, it's almost like the the the, the camera can't take how bright this is to how dark this is. Yeah, the camera yep. will make this either completely black, or yep. this, or if you get this, so this is exposed correctly, then this will be bright white, and you won't even wouldn't yep. even see this cathedral. So I was trying to be that brave in terms of contrast in painting, and I think right. it's quite, right. uh, it's quite a hard thing to teach yourself to do. So I had all of this painted in here, but. Then what I did was, once the painting was almost finished, I then painted over this in a dark, almost like wishy-washy black grey. Right. And it caused all of these colours to seep. And in a way, it undid some detail and it undid some work, but in order to to knock it back to black. And I think I'd do it again later on. And I was really pleased with how it worked because this to mm, me yeah. is kind of spain seeing those shapes yes and yeah, those right. narrow, uh, old the old towns in lots of spanish cities um yeah, yeah really pleased with this one um we're doing we're, we're trying to do two to one because i did twice as many right. pictures of you so it's, yeah. i think it's your turn now uh my turn okay i saw this oh, i like this one this was um in a cafe called Flora, who your favourite person recommended to us. Yeah, and I don't um, think I've been there. I was talking to my favourite person about this, and she thinks we have, but I'm not so sure I have. And it is quite right. close to uh, my favourite person's yeah. flat, isn't it? It is. So, it's at the, the side of the park where the uh, William Yeah, Arnold I know is. where it is, yeah. And yeah. so, once again, that's, that's, that's neat that you've gone in a place I've walked past a, a, a dozen times or more, and, and now yeah. I can go there and try it next yeah. time. I recommend it. It's good. Uh, and that morning we sat there, they were playing some, you know, cafes always play music I've never heard before, but it's always interesting. And it's kind of like, you know, lo-fi grooves, things like that. Yeah. Uh, and I realised that my, I've, I've got a smartphone these days and it can tell me what song's playing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it was a band from Bath of all places. Um <laughs> Oh well, yeah, that was a nice place. And I Should we name the band? Listen, can right. you tell us the band? You no, can't. I've forgotten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have I? Have I? No, completely gone. Uh, oh, um, hang on. No, I can. I can. I've kept the page open on my phone. Ah, uh, brilliant. Here we are. It's Ruben's daughters from Bath. There you go. I I, I reckon you should hashtag them into this because I think they yeah. should know. When and I'm the song was Underwater Garden, and it was really interesting. So, yeah. Okay. I'll let them know. Um, uh, but, um, 
yeah, I wanted to draw these lights. And I sat there for ages looking at them, thinking, should I draw it? Should I draw it? And for me, there's often, especially when I'm, when I'm in somewhere like a cafe, I feel a bit of a dick getting my sketchbook out and starting to draw. Um, you got to get that. Yeah. Out yeah. Of the way. Okay, this is this is this is pertinent to some paintings coming up. Actually, um, I there is that's the other problem with painting on location. There is something it can't be helped. You are sort of showing off, and you might as well accept you yeah. are a little bit. I mean, you yeah. certainly can't get annoyed with people coming up and looking over your shoulder. The no. funny thing is, is when you start, people have no idea how long you've been there. And I think yeah. both of our paintings can look really quite unimpressive on the first few <laughs> marks. And so that I find that funny when someone walks over and like, all right. And you're like, oh, shit. You know, like, 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 like with this, for instance, the first thing I would have done would just would have been paint a yellow cock. In the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I saw a, I saw a video by a, a British urban sketcher and he was teaching a, a group of people in uh, Porto and um, he was saying the same thing to them. He was saying, you know, you, someone might come along just as you started painting and go, eh, and you, you want to say, come come back in a couple of hours, come back, and you'll see it was all worth it. Tell you what hasn't happened to me. Actually, that's not true. It did happen to me once this year, but I think it's only happened twice ever is mm -hmm. someone wanting to buy it. Right. Like someone walking up to you, seeing your painting and saying, and, and I, I sort of, this might sound a bit egotistical, but I sort of imagine it might happen more than it does because that seems to me to be a great story. You're seeing someone painting, yeah. you get talking to them. Yeah. And then you say, well, can I have it? And I'm often yeah. sort of ready to sell it for a lot less when that's happening. Because I also like that idea. I like the idea of that story that yeah. I just painted it. And it was only in my possession, you know, and barely before the paint dried, did it leave my possession. Yeah. Um, it happened with that painting of the telecom van. But even then, he didn't buy it off mm -hmm. me then. He went home and found me online and then brought it off me. Yeah. But a long time ago, I painted something in New Keen, Cornwall, probably about 30 or 40 years ago. And then a guy came out and brought the painting off me. Uh, this, um, now I have uh, flown to Barcelona. Now I was only in right. Barcelona a couple of days, a few days before you in the same flat yeah. as you, but actually all I managed to paint in Barcelona, but I quite like it is something at the airport. So I this like is um, a little truck at Barcelona airport. I'll tell you what I find interesting about that is that the, um, it's despite it being an object, it's, it's very abstract and, the um because you got the markings on the the floor, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to work out the perspective. But it's very graphic. Yeah, I think it is. I think sometimes I sometimes I picked it up and it almost looks like this is three D. But then other times you're right. There's almost like a slightly cubist element to, to, to what's yeah. going on, yeah. and it isn't entirely clear. Actually, here's the edge, the, the steps up to the plane. Yeah. Here is the wing of the plane there. Then yeah. you can just see that, that faint shadow. Yeah, yeah. Um, the actual light's fading here a little bit, but I, I think it's still clear enough for us, isn't it? No, it's still fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Ooh. then I am in Oviedo. Ooh, and right. Then that's I, nice. Yeah, I'm really, I really get cracking now. Mm. I, um, I was on my own. Um, my, uh, and I'd gone up to Asturias to do some shows and I'd gone to Oviedo and, and really looking at the diary, I should have possibly even considered coming back to England for a bit because I spent five, four or five days in, in Oviedo, not really knowing what was there, waiting to do a gig on the Friday. Um, and I don't, I don't know. I, I swing on how good I am as as a uh, 
as a um, solo traveller. Um, I do like moments of it, and yeah. but and I can just feel a bit lonely, you know. I just can yeah, after yeah. I've, I've, I've eaten out a couple of times. Yeah. You know, I think I, I think I do, but I think some people can't can't do it at all. I think some people couldn't do it even for one day, and I can do it for a bit. But I, um, but what it did mean is I could really sit outside a cafe and sit there for ages. And in terms of talking to people, yeah, this one was great. I uh, really got to know the owner of the cafe. He kept coming out, sending different staff out, and and I kept <laughs> buying things as I was going. And I, I think this took me, I don't know, maybe it took me longer than two hours. I, I, I felt right. no need to go anywhere. The sun was out, the paint yeah. was dry and nice, and, and, and um, it's unusual for me to think that like that. I usually always get a little bit restless at some point and i think bits of this detail and shadow yeah would have suffered ordinarily but for but for this particular mood i managed to get into i think um, it has that, a companion that fence, just bring it back that that fence for me makes it yeah and i think it really gives is, a an impression of different levels of depth yeah yeah, and obviously this is is uh, the use of pen here. Yeah, just doing that, um, which I think is justified. There's also a very tiny amount of pen um, right. here on some of these details here, but I think you're right. I think that's another way to use pen to use it on the stuff here and yeah. have the background seemingly go a little bit out of focus by having yeah the wooliness of brushwork. Um, it's got a companion. This is only mm. a little way that side. They're quite near each other. Um, and this is the main cathedral in Oviedo. Um, and uh, similar. Isn't it interesting? It's, it, they're really good for memories. I was I spent this, the whole time I was painting this, I was listening to, um, uh, what's it called? We've mentioned it before. Um, Nothing is Real, the Beatles podcast. Right. I, I, I mean, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should have my headphones off and should be sho soaking up the atmosphere. But I remember talking, uh, listening to those two uh, guys from Ireland uh, waxing on I about some, uh, some obscure detailed crap about the Beatles. <laughs> I think they'd like to know that you were listening to them in Oviedo <laughs> while painting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They would do, um, definitely. Yeah, really, really start getting really pleased with what I'm doing here. Show me one of yours. Um, so, oh, there we go. Oh. The, um, surprising, unexpectedly named uh, Arc de Triomphe. Yeah, it's, it's the um, Arc de Triomphe, yeah. And I yeah. have also painted that. Uh, um, it's, it's also something I've painted. In fact, there's a painting of it on my wall in the corridor. Yeah. Um, it's a nice spot in Barcelona, that whole, like, boulevard. Yeah. Um, Did you go into that park? I can't remember what it's called. That's near. Yes, we went into the park as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's lovely. How I many we were there on the Saturday afternoon? And everybody was out. And yeah. Yeah. Right. There was a. We also walked through it on the Friday, and there was a guy busking, a young guy busking with his guitar, and uh, a party of school kids just stopped and started listening to him, and then they were all asking him questions afterwards. Really <laughs> sweet. Um. <laughs> But yeah, nice spot. I just sat down, just did that sketch, and yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. I, it takes me back there. I can, I can, like you said about memories. I remember sitting there drawing that, and I remember yeah, people yeah, like sitting I, a little bit further up. Like I say, I, 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 do you have do you have any of your own paintings on your wall in your house? I've got uh, one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be um I used to be quite anti it. I used to think it was akin to you know like when you go around couples' houses and they have pictures of themselves on their in the living room. Like, like again, really we've big. got we've we've got pictures of ourselves, but very, very few. Like um I think like photo booth pictures. Yeah, sure, sure. I've got that Just too. That. I've got some yeah. photo booth pictures on, on stuck on my fridge. I've got one picture of me and my favourite person in in the bedroom. But I'm talking more like like 
art prints. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. are, like massive, no. horrible your own face. Yeah, and I wondered yeah. whether like having your artwork on your wall was something like that. But <laughs> I've got some paintings. Well, they are paintings of Barcelona in my hallway. And I think it isn't such a daft thing to do. I think it's it's an interesting way to sort of reflect and think about your work. And I, usually, I, I think change. it depends on what what it is. I think you're right, but, but um, your your like landscape stuff, your your urban sort of stuff. I think I, I would put that up certainly because yeah. it's all the kind of like holiday snaps. Yeah. And more so, really, more so. Like I say, yeah. like, like like this, 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 and this one freeze together. You know, a few hours. Yeah. Of 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 you know, I can I can remember several things. I can remember the woman sitting one bench over from me. I can remember her smoking and talking to someone on the phone. I can remember yeah. the guy that came over and asked me for change whilst I was doing it. There's there's lots. There's a very detailed memory about this hour. Yeah here yeah um this also is some one i'm really proud of this is uh, i Bat remember you Yeda. sent it to me yeah and um this yeah i mean this really took some work because this, this is where i felt like i was really getting somewhere because i think to sort of render this kind of lattice work and the idea that this is a you know uh um like a fence or rail around it and these are struts and to do that without pen but to, to render it with the gaps in between and the difference in light yeah yeah, yeah i think i really learned some things this day um very good i think this this is one of my better paintings i've done for a while i think i think it's really good yeah thank you um and then I went on a, I think I was talking to you whilst doing these. I think this day you I was were. talking to you quite a bit. And these two are both, um, both a little uh, a fishing town called Cudiero, uh, right at the top of Spain, has all these coloured buildings. And once again, the chap, you know, the temptation to, to break and use pen to render these uh, um, umbrellas and this fence and this was once again a case where <laughs> this was kind of funny so the the owner of this cafe uh kept coming out and seeing how he's doing and we didn't really <laughs> understand each other but it's that beautiful thing where right. we did understand each other because i guess what he was saying to me was wow there's a lot of you know you've got a lot to paint there Right. Yeah. And then I went in and he had some postcards of um another artist who'd sort of done right. not the same view but similar paintings of the town. But <laughs> there's no way to say this without sounding like a prick. But they weren't as good as mine. <laughs> 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 and he was being very sweet and he said here for you and he gave me it it was very sweet but oh. he said, it's the same. and he was saying the same and i think he was doing that thing was i think what he was trying to say to me was you could sell yours as a postcard I, we had yeah. such a language yeah. barrier that we weren't understanding each other but i think what he's trying to say is it's the same but i kind of wanted to say to him well it isn't really the same is it mine's, mine's better <laughs> <laughs> um i've even written a song uh called cudiera since i've been back and and now i'm nice. i'm sort of thinking about there's even possibly i don't know there's some record cover possibilities yeah. here yeah, um, yeah this is the opposite view of that so so i'm yep. about here i think looking down right. So right. these roofs are these roofs reversed, which I quite oh, like, okay. which also makes me imagine it as a, you know, a front and back of a record. Cassettes, cassette cover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The right format. <laughs> I tried releasing a cassette. <laughs> no one's interested. They say they are. <laughs> they're not. They say cassettes are back, you know. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, your turn, definitely. I think I'm right, um, again. It's ah. Cafe Flora. 
And interesting that you're getting into um, the typeface of ink. Is that uh, an attempt to do the typeface um, uh, of of Flora? Is that the sign in um, Flora? It's taken. It's kind of hinting at the typeface without trying to copy it. Um, I just felt like once I'd drawn the 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 T, that it lent itself to having some text going across. Yeah. In a, another curve and i think my own text it wouldn't work in a curve yeah and so it needed to be something more solid looking yeah i think that's an interesting oh, yeah. way to go with it a sort of a sort of a hybrid between your painted handwriting and what you're seeing mm. that could be interesting well again i remember sitting outside whereas the other one from flora was indoors this was outside yeah and yeah, just a lovely, lovely day. And yeah, again, the, the, uh, this really shows that that blue down there, that bluey grey, really shows how much like a marker that this paper makes the paint into. It, it just goes straight in, and it's 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 flat instantly. Whereas... You're making me. You're, you're making me lust after some of that paper. Uh, <laughs> I, I, there's a, a paper shop here. Yeah, there's paper shop in here in London that sells what you correctly describe as very thirsty watercolour paper. Yeah, it and, might be something uh, like Fabriano or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's really expensive. It feels like very posh. Yeah. It, it's really expensive and it's it. it's a little too expensive to justify how ha haphazard I am sometimes because sometimes I start yeah. waiting for it. But maybe it's not, maybe it's not. And maybe as I'm, you can see on the back, I needed to use um, a bit of Spanish newspaper to go on oh, okay. so it didn't right. write the edge on the yeah. leaf there. So, yeah. yeah, that was well, that's another great thing about painting in the sun. Um I I, I quite like how quickly things dry and you can oh, do interesting right try, you can do interesting things with like quite loading like like here, you can do interesting things by loading up quite a lot of water to push that yeah. back and yeah. trusting that it won't because if it sits there too long weirder things happen but if it dries quite quickly and seeps into the paper it's a yeah. nicer effect well for me it's it, so yeah i had to be really quick because i tend to rely on uh the paint staying wet um yeah so i can push it around so this was like i had to go straight in and keep keep moving yeah uh, sometimes i do and sometimes i don't yeah mm. yeah um i then did my show in Oviedo, and then I was uh -huh. off on a bus trip to San Sebastian. Right. Uh, and so once again, went back to that uh, similar to yeah. this one from Cadiz, sort of tried to do that again. I kind of like this one even more, maybe, because I like the um, the intersect shadow there. And that yeah, blue. yeah, and so I did it the same yeah. way. Sort of painted all this in detail. So at one point, this painting looked like it was all kind of in the same amount of light, and then did this wash on it. Um, very expensive painting. This I sat in this restaurant, and uh, my favorite person <laughs> in the world was encouraging me to eat anywhere in this old part of San Sebastian. Right, and I might do one more painting in retrospect to San Sebastian. It's beautiful, but um. Yeah, just didn't quite look at the menu and how expensive it was before I started <laughs> ordering everything. But it was extremely tasty, so and I got a painting <laughs> out of it, so I'm not complaining. No. Uh, really, also, uh, that thing as well when you're painting something like this, that you have to deal with the light changing as you're, as you're painting it. You know, so yeah, that shadow, shadow moving. Here, and then this counter shadow here. Yeah. You know, they're moving every couple of minutes, really, at yeah. a certain time of day. Yeah. And so you just have to eventually decide, okay, now I'm painting it in, it's yeah. this. Then you look up a minute later and it's moved. You're just like, no, I have to trust what I saw or what yeah. I recorded then. Um, it really makes me wonder how um, I went to a museum in Oviedo and looked at some really beautiful old paintings. And it really makes me wonder how people, like, amazing painters of light did that without photography you know it's all very well me doing this in an hour or three quarters an hour but when you see yeah. paintings it clearly took them days if not weeks how do they do that how do they capture that light and that moment because they didn't have the photography I, I find that really is it pre preliminary sketches a lot of really quick sketches to 
catch you in that moment but, quickly. I mean, part of it just must be a leap of faith, wasn't it? I mean, there must be yeah. an element of it that is a leap of faith. I, I know yeah. light, I know shadow. I've taken some notes and I can go back there and I can go and do days, but but ultimately I'm I I can somehow put this moment together. Yep. Um, uh, you or me? I've got um, t- two more to go. I've got one more, so you you go. Okay. Uh, this is the castle in uh, Zaragoza, where I did my last show. Mm-hmm. Um, Al, oh God, I can't even remember my night writing. Al, <laughs> yeah. um, this was really hard. This was a really hard one to do. Was it? Um, yeah, I can't. I think I, I think I was, I think I pulled out too far. Like if you imagine, I don't know. If you imagine that in contrast, I think in yeah. this one, I, I should have sort of painted, I should have painted that. Right. That. Okay. Yeah. And I think to render areas like this and stuff, I, I think I am right. leaving out a bit too much information actually. I, I don't know. I think it, you get an impression of the, the heft of the building, though. You know, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting one. Um, it's getting near towards the, uh, the trip, and maybe, maybe I'd started to peak now. Maybe even I was right. starting to lose my... Like, like, I actually haven't painted a single thing since I got back. Um, no, I've not drawn know. either. No. The, uh, um, I must say, the, the shadows at the front of that painting, of the... the the shadow from the bush and that. Yeah. Really, so there's, yeah, a, there. there's like a moment. Really strong. Yeah. 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 And this, that's the sort of stuff I want to get more and more into. Of course. Yeah. You know, we're in a season now where there isn't s- such strong light really. Um, no, it's, everything's very it's, flat. It's, it's, and, and, and it is something to do with Spain that I'm, I'm painting those, um, those. That well, there's a, bits. there's a reason, isn't there? A lot of great artists go and live in the Mediterranean. Yeah. Or, uh, they like yeah. um, it's like the deserts in America and that. Yeah. A lot of yeah. lights. And uh, my very last painting, this was, I painted this when I got back, actually. I painted it from a photo, but this was kind of a challenge. I actually painted it in a, a drawing club, the last drawing you club. You did? Did, didn't I? Yeah. But, um, yeah. I don't know. Once again, I, I think, I think I'm quite enjoying setting myself some challenges with this this style and, and this kind of technical straightness of, of this plane at Zaragoza airport. Yeah. I think I'm almost like deliberately trying to pick things now that don't suit not drawing in line you know, or the, yes. sorry, that would yeah. suit drawing in line. Something that would be yeah. so much easier to draw in a diagrammatic style. Yeah. Um, and that's me. That's my trip to Spain Challenge. in watercolors. Well, my, my last one, I'm pleased that, kind of closing with this although i've got something else just after this this guy man this is <laughs> so this, my this friend is, uh this is the guy from fast eddies yeah yeah fast eddies so um I put halfway into the the holiday i started craving a burger um and um we'd initially we'd i had a look for a few places and we thought all right well maybe we'll go to this place and that and there's one I spotted, Fast Eddie's, just round the corner from the flats. Yeah. And it's kind of a, you could go in, inside and sit in, but they also had a hole in the wall where you could just get. Yeah. And you could, you there. could, you could fleetingly think that it's terrible. Yeah. Possibly. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks well, it just kind very of, unassuming, but then did, because but, of where it is, yeah, I, I mean, I think I was inclined to give it a second chance. Yeah, yeah. So you told me because in the, we'd gone, we were at the Kyle to Cold bar, mm. and we we started with one drink, and then we went on to the flight of drinks, like you'd mentioned, the five little yeah, tasters. yeah, that's great, yeah, yeah. And then Becky's like, I just want to stay here for a bit. So where are we where are we going? I said, Well, we were going to go to this fancy looking place but there's a place near the flat called fast eddies that does burgers and they do a they do a veggie like they did um was it like a, a onion and cauliflower pakora burger or something like okay that. 
So Becky's like, oh, that sounds good. So then we basically literally said the words, shall we just get drunk and go there? (laughs) (laughs) It's what we did. Uh, And we were sitting outside. There was literally only two chairs left and they were outside. Yeah, I know where they are. Yeah, I can picture Uh, them. So we were sitting eating our burgers and this guy was working in there just doing cooking and he he sort of – um. Popped his head out. So they all right? And like, yeah, sure, yeah. And then I'm thinking, sounded English. And then he popped his head out again later. And uh he said something again. I said, are you are you from the UK? He says, Yeah, South London. So we just got chatting. I was basically the 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 chat was all nearly all one way from me just saying how great the burgers were. Um and then we went in two days later and he was there. He said he recognized us. So that was nice. Uh, I bought the Fast Eddie's t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the day after, we walked past tw- like twice. We'd seen him, as, you know, working in there, and he'd see us out the window and give us a wave. And this time we walked past, and he was sitting outside on a chair eating. And uh, I laughed and I said, Oh, you see, you're trying your own supply there. Um, and we got chatting, and I asked if I could take his picture so I could paint him when I got home. And he said yes. So, kind of non creepy way of getting. Have, you, have you sent it to him? Oh. I, well, this is the thing with social media. Um, sometimes it's a little bit disappointing. Um, I put it on Instagram and I tagged Fast Eddie's in there and uh, had no response whatsoever. So, <laughs> Yeah, I've seen it. I think no, it's I know what you mean. It's uh, I, I had a similar thing with um, I don't know if did you ever go to um, oh my god, why can't I think of what it's called? It's a coffee bar that I really like. <sighs> What's it called? Nomad. Did you go to Nomad? I didn't go to Nomad, but I, I'd yeah, I, that, I, so I, I had a similar thing in there and I drew a painting of 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 of. A coffee cup and it, it's it's weird I, I don't know if we know our currency sometimes and 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 several of staff were like, oh, that's great that's really great and one of them took a yeah. photograph of it and i didn't mind i just left it there i just literally said oh here yeah you go. and just kind of, and then i thought thought maybe oh maybe that might come up on the instagram and and yeah. it didn't <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like no. you can't you can't necessarily assume that you know an artist walking into there is the greatest thing that ever happened to them. Maybe they get 10 no, artists a day and they're it. absolutely <laughs> sick of us. <laughs> and the thing is that, I mean, Fast Eddie's, their, um, their social media presence is extremely cool and funky and right. young. Uh, and I'm, I'm only two of those things, Darren. Right? So, But also, <laughs> as well, I, like... <sighs> Social media, like, just happens in that moment and then disappears. Mm. And and I also have seen things before where someone sent me something and I thought, oh, that's really good. I'll retweet that. I'll react to it. And about a week later, I thought, shit, you never did that. Yeah. You know, that person did that thing. You never did. I did it recently with someone doing a cover. And I thought it was fine and great. And I realized I did eventually do something, but I realized about, you know, two weeks later that I, it, by all, it just looked like I'd ignored it. And I really hadn't. Right. It just slipped yeah, my mind, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, Brilliant. So well done. Speaking of social media then, uh, and mm-hmm. sometimes people not responding, got something here, Ooh. which is, um, will link into something about social media. I bought this in a market, uh, they had a, an artist's market in the uh, Placa Real, which uh, I couldn't tell you where it is. We stumbled across it. It's near the Raval area, okay, Barcelona. And uh, it was a really impressive square. It felt uh, it's um, a lot of palm trees in there, all, all four sides surrounded by buildings and hotels. Um, and it felt extremely South American. If Roger Moore had gone in an episode of The Saints to a South American country, it would have been filmed there. And I bought this. So this is how it came, all lovely bit of string fastening it up and that. Um, Let's see. 
So I want to show you this, just there's a little story that comes with this. This looks like you haven't opened it since you brought it. No, no, I just opened it now. Oh, yeah. How exciting. So this, look at that, it's very vibrant on camera. Mm. Um, so this is a sketchbook. Okay. And it's kind of handmade. What's great is that it opens quite flat. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's decent quality paper. And this cover is by an artist. That is the artist's name, the Jesus Morentin. Um, and this sketchbook is produced by a company called Ellipsis. Right. And the notes is, uh, it means it's notebook. Notes. Whereas we call it sketchbook. I think in Spain they call them notebooks still. Right. Uh, and what they do, they take people's uh, discarded sketches and drawings and they cover these sketchbooks with them. Right. So I um, had a look at the website today, this morning, uh -huh. and uh, it said they were looking for, you know, if you want to be involved, if you're an artist and you want to get involved, get uh -huh. in touch. So I sent them an email. So I've got loads of um, sketches on paper that I'm never going to sell. Um, I'm not really sure if they something that I'd even want to hang on to. Um, would you be interested? And instantly, I sent them the email, and instantly they got back to me on Instagram and said, yeah, we'll take it, send it. There's a... There's a there's a bit of business there as well, which I'm not going to, but uh it's not okay. I'm not just giving it to them. Well um, So I'm sending that later probably today or tomorrow. But what's interesting is I then started going through my uh all my old sketches and thought, Oh god, I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because you start censoring yourself, you start thinking, I can't send that, I can't give them that. Right. That's rubbish. But the, the yeah. point is that it's it's up to the guy who who puts these together. For, it's up to him to decide what's suitable and what isn't. That's a really um, nice idea. Yeah, he's called David Bonani. And he's a a, a graphic oh, sorry, designer. Sorry, was this a shop designer. or was this a stall or a? It was a stall. Um, they've got a, a shop online, which I'll link to. Um, and they've got obviously you know the usual Instagram accounts. Um, this is great that yeah. you know I've got about at least two or three days worth of stuff to do to follow in your footsteps now after me sending you to some places. It's great. <laughs> I've got the design museum. I've got that comic shop you went to. Um, well, got, comic uh, shop. One restaurant. Want me to mention that? Yeah, yeah, sure, do. Yeah. Well, the comic shop. There we are. Um, the sticker on the front, fat bottom books. And uh, the, the best. Am I right in saying you've also managed to get some business that way as well? Like possibly. Yes. Uh, they, I just basically I asked him at the counter, "Will you take some of my zines?" He said yes. So I emailed him this morning as well. That's why I was on a bit of a roll today, ticking uh, little jobs off. So um, they're going to stop some of my zines. This comic book shop is the best comic shop I've ever been in. Wow. It's okay. Absolutely full of. Um, self-published uh zines mini comics books um you've you've got like one shelf almost of just superhero stuff and the rest is all alternative comics and wow brilliant you've got big names daniel klaus and oh uh rodriguez you know people like that and then just people that who literally just sit in their bedrooms and just think i'm gonna make a little comic myself mm. really really good Highly recommend it. Well, really is it? Great. Well, it turned out to be um professionally kind of successful trip for me as well. Well, yeah. I mean, well, kind of for both of us, really. I suppose. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I haven't sold anything, but then I haven't tried because I, I, because it's this rare thing where, and it is rare for me, as you know. Everything I paint, I just immediately put on Etsy. Yeah. And this time I haven't. I. 
they're mine for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Good. Brilliant. Great. Barcelona. <laughs> Adios, Darren. Oh, you. you... <laughs> Adi, adios, Darren. Okay. <laughs>